Hey there, this is Laura from Language Arts Teachers, and I want to show you what is exactly inside the lesson plan members area. So if you're curious about what is behind the curtain, so to speak, let me walk you through what it's like to be a member and to access the resources. So first of all, once you decide to join us and once you receive your login details, password, all that, this is what it looks like. It doesn't look like there's much there, but let's go ahead and click on this box. It's the only one to click on right now. And inside this box is where we have the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade resources. I clicked on the box. I'm going to ignore the enroll in course part because I've already done that. And down here, you can see how I'm scrolling down, is what we call our class curriculum. So we have all of our sixth grade lesson plan units, seventh grade lesson plan units, and eighth grade lesson plan units. I will then click on this down arrow, and all the bonuses are in here as well. So I offer all kinds of different bonuses throughout the school year. We have beginning of the school year bonuses, we have end of the school year bonuses, plus everything in between. We also have seasonal bonuses and more coming soon all the time. So when I talk about how I release new materials regularly, this is what I'm talking about. So when you become a member, not only do you get the current bonuses I'm releasing, you get access to everything I've released in the past, as well as everything coming in the future. Okay, scrolling back up to the lesson plans. We have 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. This is perfect if you teach multiple grade levels, or even if you only teach one grade level, it's nice to have the other ones there so that you can provide scaffolding and differentiated instruction for struggling learners, or if you have more advanced students that you'd like to pull materials from other units for in other grade levels. Okay, so um, let's go up to 6th grade. You'll notice that it says start here. This is a snapshot overview of what's in all the sixth grade units. So this is the mini, <clears throat> excuse me, the mini unit for genres. So it tells you what's in each unit. Um, I give you advice about when and how to use this unit, what to move on next to. And then of course you can scroll through here and see what's in every week of every unit. Okay, I'm gonna back out of this and show you what that actually looks like. You can use these in any order. You do not have to go in order. Every language arts teacher likes to go in his or her own um, process. So you might want to start with a poetry figure of language. You might want to start with elements of drama. It just depends. I'll go ahead and click on the elements of fiction and short stories. It's a six week unit. You do get the snapshot again here if you need it. And then of course you see where all six weeks are housed. Let's click on week one and let me show you what that looks like. Everyone's computer is different. Mine automatically downloads like this in my downloads folder. Some people's end up on their desktop. Everyone's system is a little different, but I'm gonna click on this down arrow. And you can see here we have day four activities, day five activities, um, days two through day three activities because that's meant to take a couple of different days. All of these lesson plans are designed for about a 45 minute to maybe a one hour time period. I recommend clicking on week at a glance. Every single week in every unit in every grade level has a week at a glance file. I prefer to click on that first because this is a one page PDF for the teacher. It gives you an overview of what is happening that week. It explains what you might need to get ready for each day. It gives you specific details on how to do less grading that week, how to make fewer copies, and specific ideas about differentiated instruction specific to that week's activities. It's a great place to start. Then I can find the week one lesson plans. Let's open up that and I'll show you what it looks like. Each day has its own page for lesson plans. You have the objective, the I can statement, in this case, we have a box for common core standards and a box for the Texas Teaks standards for our friends down in Texas. You have your procedures for the day, the assessment, the way the students will be assessed, and any additional resources that you might need to think about. One of these pages for each day, so here's the day two one. Now one thing about the lesson plan pages is that these are PDFs. If you have PDF editing software, 
It's easy to edit these to make them your own. For example, I can click on Edit PDF, and you can see that if I'm not in Texas, I could very easily delete those buttons. I'll put it back because I don't really want to mess it up. So it depends on what software you have at your disposal, whether or not you can edit PDFs. But as far as the lesson plan pages go, these right here, there are different ways to use them. Some teachers merely use them as a way to copy and paste the elements that they need for their purposes. Every week comes with its own set of bell ringers. Some people call them warm-ups, you might call them do-nows, it depends on your district or what state you're in. But you can open these up and everything you need for each day to start your class is right there. Each bell ringer is designed to help students get started in the day and it's designed to be something that they can do on their own. All grade levels, all units have those elements. Let's click on day 1.1. This shows you this is the first thing that you would do in class that day. Day 1.2 means that's also day one, but that's the second thing you would do. So I'll click on day 1.1 here. It'll open up in just a second. And you might have noticed I have another day 1.1 here too. That's because that's a PDF. I have a PDF file and I have a Word document file. That way you can use whichever one that you want. We have instructions for the teacher. We see that this is part of the fiction short story graphic organizer. We see that it's meant for a group work around setting. I can scroll down and I can see that I have the actual handout to use for my students. And I have ideas for how it fits in with the overall lesson plans. What does the setting tell us? It has student instructions, it's setting analysis, and so this goes along with the objective and the goal for the day. Okay, it's easy to go down rabbit hole after rabbit hole with this, but that's, that's an example of Fiction Elements Week 1. I can scroll down to the seventh grade lesson plans if I need that. I can click on anything here that I might need. So let's say I click on Descriptive Reading and Writing Unit. The Descriptive Reading and Writing Unit for seventh grade contains a mix of poetry and fiction short stories. So I can click on Descriptive Week 1, and the first four weeks of this unit are centered around poetry. The next four weeks of this unit are centered around short stories. You could do them in either order. It doesn't matter. There's a lot of versatility with this. So here, mine opened again like this on my downloads folder, or in my downloads folder. I can click the down arrow, and now I can see everything in there. And again, you'll notice that sometimes you see the same item twice. It's because I try to provide a Word document and a PDF document to meet everybody's needs. There are many lesson teachable PowerPoints. We have bell ringers, we have exit tickets. If you see a T, like this one says 7.1.3T, that means it's grade seven, week one, day three, and the T is for teacher. Teacher means it's just a teacher idea sheet. So teacher instructions for helping students read actively and annotate the poem. This is kind of like your cheat sheet. It gives you examples and differentiated ideas to reach your students' needs. If you see an S, like this one, 7.1.1S PowerPoint notes, the S is for student. That means that this is the student handout, the guided notes that they will use as you go through your teachable mini lesson. Okay, so that's what this looks like. I can scroll down to eighth grade. I have the same snapshot overview so I can see what's in each week. I can decide which unit I want to start with. And finally, once again, we have all of our bonuses down here with more being added all the time. Okay, so that is what it looks like inside the language arts teachers lesson plan member area. I want to show you one more thing. As a member of the language arts teachers lesson plan community, you also get access to a secret group. The secret group is by invitation only. It's secret because nobody can actually find it or join it. You have to be invited to it. So this is the members only area. Um, I'm just showing you that this is for teachers only, teachers of the membership only. We post the bonuses in the files section as well. We help each other. And we also have live member-only 
um, calls online twice a month where teachers come together and we ask and answer each other's questions. So that's the members only area as well. I hardly ever show that. So you just got a quick little sneak preview into that. It's a small, um, really, really kind and really generous group of teachers. Every month we have a new theme that teachers get to vote on. So as of the recording here, the theme for this particular month is putting systems into place. It could be systems around grading, systems around handling student work, systems around um, communicating with parents. It just depends. And so that's, that's the theme of this month is establishing systems. So that may seem kind of random, but I did want to show you that that exists there for members only. Hope this video helps you understand what is in the lesson plan area and how easy it is to access all the resources and growing materials.